to see that, that uh, God uh, or Jesus tell, tells you to be kind to each other and so forth. And, and then he always adds that otherwise you will, will uh, suffer uh, terrible uh, punishments in, in hell. And if you behave, uh, then of course you will be, uh, receive uh, a lot of pleasure, internal bliss in return for this uh, good behavior. So of course, I mean, the religions have been very effective, of course, in, in instilling a kind of moral behavior in people. But, but note that when you are doing this, then you, you have people behave well, but for egoistic reasons. Because this is a way of, of not ending up in hell. That's why you behave decently to each other, not destroy parties and so forth. Not because you love each other, but because, well, or if you love each other, it's because you want to good, make a good impression. So, so this is really also a non-starter. It, it's, it can produce, it can produce good behavior, but, but for the wrong reason. So, so the, God is again out of the moral picture, at least narrowly conceived as I have done here. Yeah, so, so to conclude then, that's the end of my talk, is that even if we grant that God exists, even if we grant that God is uh, infinitely good, almighty, um, and everything you want to add to this description, uh, we end up with the conclusion that he is of little uh, use in, in moral uh, situations, moral arguments. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Tanfrell. Now, uh, Professor Bill Craig. I'm not Mike. Nope. No, you can help you can Either you can get the mic or you can stand behind the pulpit. You too. I see. I help you. All right. But, well, you know, right. you never know where you end up otherwise. <laughs> Hear me? Yeah. Okay. Well, good evening. I want to say what a delight it is to be participating uh, in the debate tonight with Professor uh, Tenkir and uh, to be discussing this very important issue with you this evening. If God is dead, is everything permitted? When we ask that question, we're posing in a provocative way the meta-ethical question of the objectivity of moral values. Are the moral values that we guide our lives by mere social conventions uh, akin to driving on the right hand versus the left hand side of the road? Or are they valid independently of our apprehension of them? And if they are, then what is their ontological foundation? Moreover, why should we act morally, especially when it conflicts with self-interest? Or are we in some way held accountable for our decisions and actions? Well, tonight I want to defend two main contentions in the debate. First of all, if God exists, then the objectivity of moral values, moral duties, and moral accountability is secured. And secondly, if God does not exist, then morality is just a human invention. That is to say, morality is wholly subjective and non-binding. So consider then that first contention that if God exists, then the objectivity of moral values, moral duties, and moral accountability is secured. Here I want to make three sub-points to show the proper role that God plays in morality. First, if God exists, objective moral values exist. To say that there are objective moral values is to say that something is good or evil independently of what he, whether anybody believes so or not. It's to say, for example, that the Holocaust was morally evil, even though the Nazis who carried it out thought that it was good. And it would still have been evil even if the Nazis had won World War II and succeeded in brainwashing or exterminating everybody who disagreed with them. 
On the Judeo-Christian view, objective moral values are rooted in God. God's own holy and loving nature supplies the absolute standard against which all decisions and actions are measured. God's moral nature is thus what Plato called the good. He is the locus and source of moral value. He is by nature essentially loving, kind, faithful, uh, generous, and so forth. And thus, if God exists, objective moral values exist. Secondly, if God exists, objective moral duties exist. To say that we have objective moral duties is to say that we have certain moral obligations and responsibilities, whether we believe that we do or not. On the Judeo-Christian view, God's moral nature is expressed in relation to us in the form of divine commands, which constitute for us our moral duties. And thus far from being arbitrary, as Professor Tenker assumed, these commands flow necessarily from God's moral nature. In the Judeo-Christian tradition, the whole moral duty of man can be summed up in the two great commandments. First, you shall love the Lord your God with all your strength and with all your soul and with all your heart and with all your mind. And second, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On this foundation, we can affirm the objective rightness of love, generosity, self-sacrifice, and equality, and condemn as objectively wrong selfishness, hatred, abuse, discrimination, and oppression. Third, if God exists, then moral accountability exists. For on the Judeo-Christian view, God holds all persons morally accountable for their actions. Evil and wrong will be punished. Righteousness will be vindicated. Good ultimately triumphs over evil. And we shall finally see that we do live in a moral universe after all. In the end, the scales of God's justice will be balanced. And thus, the moral choices that we make in this life have a supreme and eternal significance. We can, with consistency, make moral choices which run contrary to our own self-interest and even make acts of extreme self-sacrifice, knowing that such decisions are not uh, empty and ultimately meaningless gestures. Rather, our moral lives have a paramount significance. So in summary, then, I think it's evident that if God does exist, then the objectivity of moral values, moral duties, and moral accountability is secured. Theism thus provides a sound foundation for morality. Now that brings me to my second contention, that if God does not exist, then morality is just a human invention. That is to say, morality is wholly subjective and non-binding. And here again, I want to make three sub-points. First, if atheism is true, then objective moral values do not exist. If God does not exist, then what foundation remains for objective moral values? More particularly, what is the basis for the value of human beings? Professor Ten Chou's view is called hedonistic utilitarianism. He believes that human happiness or pleasure is objectively good. Now, quite honestly, I just don't see any reason to think that if atheism were true, that there would be anything particularly good about human happiness. If there is no God, then there's no reason to regard human happiness as is any way important or significant. After all, on the atheistic view, what's so special about human beings? They're just accidental byproducts of nature which have evolved relatively recently on an infinitesimal speck of dust called the planet Earth, and which are doomed to perish individually and collectively in a relatively short time. The philosopher J.P. Moreland points out, on an evolutionary secular scenario, human beings are nothing special. The universe evolved to us through a blind process of chance and necessity. 
There is nothing intrinsically valuable about human beings.